Hey, man, what's up? What's going on, Wells? How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing amazing, if I say so myself. Awesome, man. Good to hear. Yeah. Um, Where are you at? I'm at Yakima, Washington, just two hours away from Seattle. Cool. Pretty area. How about yourself? Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina, yeah, I saw the um, the area code. I was like, it sounds familiar. I thought it was Dallas. Um, I thought it was like it could be Utah because it's it's similar in that area. But I was uh, I was a little unsure. But yeah, you've been here. What's that? Have you been here before? Um, no. When I went through back in 2015, I was traveling to to Dallas to spend uh, Christmas with my aunt for a weekend. And so I went all the way through Washington, Seattle, Denver, Wyoming. And I went through all that area, through the desert area, until I got to Dallas. So that's why. Cool. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, for sure. So just before we get started, Wells, I wanted to ask you. So, I mean, you've been, uh, I got my notes here, nine soccer, uh, nine years playing as a soccer professional. You were the number number fifth overdraw, overdraft pick in the 2007 MLS Super Draft. You won the 2007 uh, Lamar Hunt U.S. and Open Cup champion, 2008 Super Liga champion, which is an uh, incredible achievement, 2010 MLS Cup champion, and then you were the, the Colorado Rapids uh, Hunt Metanium Player of the Year. And now, which is the first question I want to ask you, now that you're the co-founder of Soccer Resilience, how did you transition from being a pro soccer player into owning your own business? Like, what are the principles required um, in order to run a business and then being a professional player? Yeah, it's a good question, man. Um, I, I actually started my business when I was playing. So I started oh, wow. and founded Wells Thompson Soccer. Uh -huh. And so it was, you know, I would train kids and do camps in the off season, that sort of thing. My, da my dad and my wife were actually the really big catalyst of Wells oh, Thompson wow. Soccer. You know, really, it's the idea is to, you know, your platform is really never going to be any bigger than when you're a pro athlete. Yeah. And so we were really just trying to to utilize my platform to to love on other people and give back. Um, yeah. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And so I really look to use my platform to help other people. And I know, I've, you know, I've been very blessed in my life, man, and, and God's given me so much. So I understand that to whom much is given, much is expected. And so I, I you know, I try to live that way. I, I fail a lot, but, yeah. um, I, you know, that's really kind of why I feel like I was created. Well, yeah. I mean, part of failure, I mean, I was just, I just got done um, interviewing Colin Reed, who's a professional scout, and he talks about failure and how handling rejection is important in order to thrive. And in today's world, since there is so much noise, um, how important do you think, and do you think that's the most important factor that separates someone who makes it as a pro and someone who doesn't is their ability to handle rejection? Yeah, I mean, when you get to that level, yeah. everybody's good, right? And so yeah. people ask me all the time, like, what does it take to be a pro? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that have to fall in place, right? Yeah. Like, like you got to have a little bit of luck. You obviously yeah. got to be good and you got to work hard. You got to yeah. be in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can't have injuries. Yeah. Um, you know, are you the, are you the position that the team needs? Do you, do yeah. you feel the position? There's a lot of things that kind of go into that. And so, um, but yeah, that's, de that's definitely a huge component. Um, as a yeah. kid, I was like, I never played North Carolina ODP team. I don't know if the, you know what that is, but Olympic development program. So if you're like really good, you try out for the ODP team, mm -hmm. you make the ODP team, then you try out for the region team and then they have a national team, right? I never made our state team. So I've tried for years and years and never make the state team. And so I look back and um, so if you know anything about soccer, you know, Wake Forest is a perennial powerhouse and they have yeah. been for like 15 years. Um, I walked onto Wake Forest. And so, you know, I, I look at my failures as a, as a kid um, or as a young youth player yeah. as actually um, they were, they were huge for me when I went to Wake Forest, right? Yeah. Because I had learned 
they taught me so much, you know, and, and I see how they prepared me for the struggles and the challenges that I would incur wow. um, once I got to wake and once I got to a pro. So I actually, I actually hate that word. I think it's a horrible word because really, you know, obstacles aren't um, roadblocks to the way they are the way. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. just, it's failing over and over again and continuing to believe in yourself and, and work hard. Um, because it, you know, I don't know much, man, but I do know one thing in life and that we're all, we're all going to stumble and we're going to stumble yeah. as long as we live. And the more that we can learn to kind of learn from those, those stumbles or setbacks and continue to believe and push forward, the better we'll be. So, so would you say, I mean, that those doubts and, you know, past failures, you, you can call them, would you say it's almost like a mentor? that it allows you to, okay, this doesn't work and I'm just gonna keep believing in myself. Therefore, I'll stand a better chance in order to get to where I wanna be. Would you say that's yeah, kind of uh, it? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's really easy when you talk about your journey to, to yeah. make it all about yourself. Yeah. And uh, first and foremost, I have great parents. Like I have really good parents that instilled values in me and that yeah. they were always there for me no matter what. And then I have like really good coaches that have come along mm. the journey and yeah. like, taught me and lifted me up and built into me and then I have really good teammates and friends yeah. and I got a great brother and a great sister and yeah. so you know I really yes it's a mentor if you use it the right way right like okay. failure, we, we we really have a choice in how we respond yeah and so if if we incur a setback you know it can we can let it crush us mm -hmm. and we can let it just kind of paralyze us and determine or distract us and detour us from really where we're trying to go or we can just if we keep it in the right perspective and right light and we have the right people in our lives that are yeah. that are speaking that life into us then it can really just only propel us and make us stronger mm -hmm. um so it's really you know perspective is one of the one of my favorite words and one of the greatest yeah. things in life you change the way you look at things and the things you look at change for sure. Really what it comes down to is our perspective. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be where I was today if I, if it weren't for my, my family and my, my friends and loved ones. But, I, you know, I take it all the way back to, so I have an older brother who is a yeah. phenomenal athlete. And so this is what my life consisted of. Mm -hmm. uh, we would come home from school and we would play a game and my brother would beat me every single day, every wow. day. I never beat him in anything. And it would piss me off but I would go back every single day and I would want to play. Him. And so I look at those lessons as like determination, you know, perseverance, like getting up when you're down. Yeah. It really taught me so much and really kind of developed in me as a human being. I just grew up yeah. hating to lose and I was uber competitive. So I think that just fed into it. So I actually attribute a lot of my success to my brother who wow. whooped my fanny every okay. day. Okay. So, so interesting question now that we go into brotherhood and because I have two um, younger brothers and because I've seen where some brothers, like, they can get along, but they tend to despise themselves if someone is beating them at that certain thing. And then it kind of like goes and the relationship goes into something of hate instead of love. Would yeah. you say at that time, um, you hated losing, but did that build your relationship with your brother? Or would you say that you kind of hated that you lost, but then it like the relationship went downhill? How did that play out? Yeah, yeah this is how it actually happened is we would come home from school, we'd play basketball, he would beat me, I would chuck the basketball at him because I was so upset, and yeah. then he would beat me up. And okay. then I would go cry to mom and dad, and then he would get in trouble. So, I mean, oh, okay. I, you know, I, I think it was definitely a competitive spirit. He was, a, again, a, like I said, great athlete and super yeah. competitive as well. So, I mean, he was going to beat me and he didn't take it easy on me. And so I think it, we were really close in age, so like a year and a half. Okay. So we competed in everything, which I, I think was probably not the best for our relationship at the time. Okay. But now, you know, we were best, best friends and, and yeah. we laugh about it and yeah. yeah, it is what uh, it is. Interesting, interesting perspective then. Um, so now I'm um, back to soccer. And this is a question that I wanted to, to ask, to ask you, I mean, besides all that, you know, having, you have to be in the right place, right time, a lot of fact, what do you think is the missing factor that separates players from becoming professional besides being in the right time? Is it their lack of work ethic? They don't believe in themselves. 
maybe they don't have a strong coach and mentor to support them. If you if you just had to pinpoint one, what do you think that would be? Um, I would say, I would say it would be the mind. The mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you know, I um, you know, at some point everyone's working hard. Yeah, everyone is working hard, and yeah. so the older I've gotten and, and, you know, some of this stuff I didn't realize as a pro, right. Okay. As a pro of nine years, you know how I, I barely, a uh, one time I went to see a sports psychologist, but I never trained my mind. Wow. And I'm, I understand now that there are actually strategies and tips and things that mm-hmm. you can do to actually, your mind's like a muscle. You, yeah. The more you train it and work it out and exercise it, the bigger it's going to be. Okay. And so, um, you know, that's why I've started Soccer Resilience, because I believe that so much of life is lived between your ears. And really, at the end of the day, what separates the, the good from the great at that level is your mind. Like, can you yeah. bounce back from setbacks quick? You know, do you continue to believe in yourself no matter um, how much people put you down or how many times you fail? Um, and so, yeah, and it's, you know, it's um, I think it's starting to be talked about more. Um, it's yep. actually really interesting. It's one of the four pillars of U.S. soccer is mental training. Mm. Um, but as a pro, I didn't do it. And so you can only imagine how many youth soccer clubs train, yeah. tr- you know, uh, implement these sorts of things. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and what's great about sport is it's so applicable to all of life. It's the greatest yeah. team for life, right? And so yeah. what the, these training the mind is so applicable for life too. I mean, it's, yeah. think of this time, COVID, stress. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, mental health's huge. And so, um, you know, I, I've struggled my career. I think my greatest asset as a player was my toughness, my mental toughness, Mm -hmm. but somewhere along the way, I lost belief in myself and it became my greatest detriment. So if I could go back and, 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 and do one thing differently, it would be to invest in mental training. Um, but I can't do that. You know what I mean? Cause that's life you live and you learn. Um, that's why I'm so passionate about trying to take my, my pain and turn it into purpose and help the next generation. Yeah. Cause, cause I see like, um, like a lot of coaches here in the Yakima Seattle area, they'll invest a lot into techniques, strategies, you know, um, learning how to play as a team. And then I didn't even know this until I just started to, to grow and develop. And I was like, what is it? And I kept asking myself, like, what is that one key thing? Not just athletes, but I mean, business owners, CEOs, it could just be a, a construction worker or a father who was taking care of, you know, two or three daughters. And I was like, what is that one key thing? And the more I asked myself, like, it has to be like how you view the, um, your own mental strength, toughness in order to get through it. And so now uh, I wanted to ask you the question, you know, when you were playing soccer, what did you, did you, what did you focus on the most? I mean, besides the mind, was it what daily technical stuff were you invested in most? Yeah. yeah. Well, as a pro, I actually didn't, I didn't focus on the mind. I didn't, Yeah. it really wasn't, um, you know, I mean, I think that I, it was getting trained mm. um, and it had been trained, but you know, when you get to that level there, there's, you know, you're looking for any inch or any millimeter to separate yourself from someone. And, yeah. So if you really, I mean, it makes sense that you go to the thing that kind of drives everything else yeah. and that's, that's your mind. Um, but, you know, I think uh, probably fitness was a big thing for me. Okay. I think it's one of the ways that you can uh, most control, mm-hmm. um, you know, just are you fitter than everybody? It's a way to separate yourself. And, you know, I learned that at Wake you know, there was just guys that pushed me to, to be fitter. And so each year I just got fitter and stronger and, but I really relied on my fitness and athleticism a lot. Okay. Okay. Now, now question from a professional scout. Um, how much time did you spend as a pro working on shape and pattern on the 11 versus 11 side of the game? Um, we spent a decent amount. I mean, I think Wake Forest does such a good job because yeah. they, they, um, they start working on that stuff with you. I mean, it's such a professional environment. Yeah. Almost in, in, in several instances, way more professional, so to speak. I mean, every, every coach has their different philosophy, right? So some coaches yeah. are a little bit more hands-on, some, some yeah. coaches are a little bit hands-off, but Wake did it the right way. Um, yeah. You know, we spent a decent amount of time working on shape, working on positioning, 
uh, but soccer is different, man. It's not football. It's not, you yeah. know, you run 20 yards and take a right. Um, yeah. It's, it's more free flowing. And, and some coaches had a little more emphasis on, Hey, th- this is kind of the patterns we want you to play. Yeah. Yeah. But they're great because they give you ideas of, of, you know, um, things in games and, and patterns. And so once you practice those patterns and those movements, they almost become second nature to where, mm-hmm. you know, you're running the same patterns and games just, yeah just naturally because you've yeah. already, you've already drilled those, those things in your brain. So yeah. it's a decent amount of time. Okay. What other question can I ask you that would really, um, okay. So what piece of advice then do you have for, let's talk, then let's transition into parents and players, uh, building a great parent and son or daughter relationship how important do you think I mean for you you said your parents played a big role yeah tell a player that does not have supportive parents by their side that does not encourage them to play professional soccer they're just like you know it's just a waste of time because I know some players who do not encourage them and it actually prevents the player it like uh diminishes their belief in themselves and then they just don't end up going for it what do you have yeah it's a really good my parent i think it's the role of a parent to kind of push your kids to um become all that god created them to be Mm -hmm. um but i think at the end of the day i mean society puts such an emphasis on sports sports is great but the end goal for my parents was never for me to be a pro athlete okay my parents wanted to support any of the dreams that i had and so, you know, soccer was my gift and my talent, my skill, what I felt like God blessed me with. So they were always like, no matter how many times I, you know, was cut from ODP or never made a team, they were always there to kind of support me and lift me up and, and, um, and believe in me. Right. So I think at the end of the day, and I, I've got young kids and yeah. so I'm learning this, it's, it's so much easier said than done, yeah. but, um, you know, I think the role of a parent is to be a parent. Okay. And not a coach. And so when your kid comes mm, off, okay. your kid, yeah, when your kid comes off that field, I mean, look, it, it's all um, it's all on an individual basis. There isn't a, a formula that fits for everyone. Yeah. You really, just because your your kids have different personalities, right? And, yes. and so if your kid's really trying to go for it, and they want you to kind of come alongside them and encourage them, and it really it's up to the parent, though, at the end of the day, to if their kid is look, I played with guys that were really good. And yeah. their parents rode them and they beat them up, not beat them up physically, yeah. but like they were mad when they didn't perform well. Yeah. And uh, I, I think what's really important is for people to understand that they aren't their performance. So mm-hmm. like it did like if if I played really bad, my parents loved me the same as if I was the best person on the best player on the field. Wow. And so that that's that that meant a lot to me, right? But I, yeah. but you see parents and me as a parent now. I know how, like, I really want my kids to play sports. Yeah. And so I push them into it. And, um, you know, they're showing signs of they love science and they want science and they want to do science yeah. projects with dad and not throw baseball. And so I'm like, man, I got to do science projects with them because that's really what they love. Yeah. So it, it's a complicated question. I think that it, it is yeah. hard to be a parent. I think that the society's got it wrong. We just like the heroes aren't pro athletes, aren't heroes, right? Like the heroes are the military and the single moms and, yeah. um, you know, the disabled, like yeah. they're the heroes, you know what I mean? And so, um, I, I think it's really important for parents to love their kids for who they are, okay. not how they perform. And I think that can carry on to any aspect of life, right? Like as long yeah. as, so I asked my kid, um, I asked my kid three questions when he's done. Okay. It's three or two. I say, I'll either say like, Hey, did you have fun, man? Yeah. Dad I had fun. Did you work your hardest? Yeah. Dad, I worked my hardest. And he only, he knows that he can do that. But really what yeah. we're trying to emphasize here is that you got to work hard, right? Mm-hmm. Fun is a part of the game, but you got to work hard because in anything in life, you can't just float. You got to have discipline and you got to work hard. So really just trying to lay the foundation of, um, whatever he does in life, because the, the life of a pro is so short, man. And yeah. so what happens is I live my whole life like soccer would be my whole life. But wow. I'm 36 and I've got the rest of my life to live. So I, hopefully, God willing, I will spend way more time as not a soccer player versus being a soccer player. 
And so it, th- that's why the transition for me was really, really hard. Like when I, when I retired from soccer, I was depressed. I had panic attacks. Um, yeah. Man, I just didn't know who I was as a human being because soccer was my whole life. Wow. Uh, so, I, you know, it's, I think that kids need parents yeah. that love them unconditionally more than they need another coach. You know, they got a coach, right? Like yeah. hopefully they got a good coach and the coach is teaching him. But yeah. there's nothing wrong that with parents going out of the way to teach their kids. Like if my kid wants to go to the batting cage after baseball practice, I take him in the batting cage. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, I think you really just kind of got to lean on your son and push him and, and, and you know, your kids better than anybody. So, yeah. So I guess then this is like a balance balancing question. So since I, I hear a lot of, um, parents and coaches that push, you know, hey, you got to be a little bit tougher on the field and then not so tough that it actually, you know, like demoralizes, you know, a player's performance and belief. How do you or how do you find that balance between, okay, you need a little bit of tough love to keep moving forward and then like some actual love so it balances out and they're like, okay, that's the the perfect flow. That makes yeah. sense. For sure. I think that's really the, it's kind of like the job of a coach, right? Yeah. I mean, hopefully you don't coach every player the same way. Yeah. Some people respond a little bit more to, Hey, they need a little kick in the butt and they'll respond. Yeah. Um, like me, you put your arm around me and you tell me, love me and that I can do better than this. That's how I'll respond. Yeah. Like don't get in my face and yell at me and have spit coming on me. Like that just makes me pissed off. Right. Yeah. And so you, you really if you get to know your kids, get to know their, um, you know, what motivates them. Um, and then again, don't, 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 um, don't praise the outcomes, praise the effort. Okay. So, you know, like, so I don't know if you've read like grit by Angela Duckworth or uh, grit's a good one, but like praise the effort, right, man, you worked really hard in that as, as opposed to going, you're so smart. You're so smart because what happens if they, if, if you tell them they're smart and then they fail, they think they're dumb Ooh. when maybe they just didn't study or didn't put the, didn't put the effort in. So, yeah. you know, you tell, you're so awesome at soccer. You're the, you're the best player out there. What happens if they're not the best player anymore? Yeah. Or do they, or they don't do well, or they, do they stink at soccer? Yeah. You know, they just need to work harder. And so, it's challenging, man. I mean, it's, it's really challenging, but it's a growth mindset. It's, it's the, it's the mindset that like we can do basically whatever we want, as long as we put the the work in. And some people are like LeBron James was created to play basketball, right? Like he's got a little better (laughs) chance than you and I. Yeah. Um, But at the end of the day, like you, you gotta, it takes a whole, like hard work, a whole lot of hard work, a whole lot of sacrifice, a whole lot of hard work, a whole lot of sacrifice. Um, and then you have strategies to go along with that and you work smart and not just hard. You can basically do anything you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Cause have you seen the, the documentary from Michael Jordan, the last dance? I've seen some of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause, cause I look at that and, and thinking now to the question, I was like, how did Michael Jordan, again, Michael Jordan is, is a different human being. Of course, it's like a completely different beast and animal, but it's like, how, how did he push, you know, so much um i guess you know so much different competitiveness um literally would would not huddle up with his teammates to celebrate and do a quick huddle and he would just keep all his energy and on the field he would unleash it and it's like how did he manage to push his team but also show him that he cared and then holy crap that's where it, it gets interesting but other than that um wells i i do not have any more questions for you uh, all I can say, man, is just I appreciate the time to actually taking the time and, and talking with me. This can actually help a lot of soccer players who are on the rise, because I know a lot of them who are definitely like I know soccer players who are 16, 17 and I'm 20. I mean, I injured my leg like a year ago and so I can't play anymore, but I, I know they can actually make it. And if I just share this this interview and this time, it will definitely help them. So I appreciate you. Yeah. yeah. I just wanna, and this is like a little tip for tat, but Michael Jordan's a human being just like you and me. Oh yeah. And he was, he was different in the fact that he did, he was driven more than anybody. Right. And, uh, but he's a kid that got cut from his high school team. Yeah. You know? And so I think that, um, 
although we as human beings know that he's just flesh and blood, we see that he's different and we set him apart, right? Or we see a great athlete and we set him apart. And yeah, sure. Some of these guys, like I can't jump like Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. Um, But the, the fact that like, for me, I never thought I'd be a pro man. I never thought I'd play soccer in mm. college, right? Like yeah. um, your dreams can come true. Um, you just got, you got to work hard. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that's an understatement. Michael Jordan worked harder than anybody. Yeah. So we can't be delusional in the fact that like, Oh, I'm going to be a pro, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be a pro. Like you got to put the effort in right yeah. you gotta believe in yourself and you gotta have drive and i mean he did the things that no one was willing to do yeah and so that's really at the end of the day that's what it is that's how you become extraordinary you do the ordinary things just better than everybody else right yeah and so michael jordan was a human just like us so we get into this mindset yeah. like he was he was otherworldly he was he was different yeah and so like i'm not different from you mm-hmm. like you know what i'm saying like i just i, I like you know, you got injured. I didn't. Right. So maybe that yeah. hindered, hindered your career. Um, yeah. whatever it is, I think that it's easy to come up with excuses and say, Oh, I can't do that. Or, you know, whatever. Um, but really, man, at the end of the day, I, I, Matthew McConaughey said it unbelievable is the stupidest word in the English dictionary. You know why? Because we, as a human race continue to do the unbelievable, right? <laughs> like, uh, what's that yeah. Davies kid from from uh, Sierra Leone who was a refugee and he just won the Champions League with Bayern Munich. He was yeah. in a refugee camp and then he came over to Vancouver and he was in their youth system and then he started and won in a Champions League final with Bayern Munich. Yeah, that's unbelievable, but he did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so much of it is is is, um, like expanding our mindset. And, and 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 really believing in 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 what we can achieve and what we can do which is really hard because we have people around us that are saying you can't do that you can't do that or we just get sucked into this comfortable lifestyle where i'm okay just playing nintendo i don't want to get up out of my bed in the morning it's cold right yeah and so that's what the great ones do they get up and they roll out of bed regardless of what they, whether they want to do it or not yeah so, it reminds reminds me of um Flo, are you a big uh, boxing fan? Do you watch boxing? I, I love MMA, man. Okay, you know MMA. I mean? So it reminds me of like Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor, all those guys who made it in like so fast. I listened to Conor McGregor's story and I'm like, wow, yeah. like just it's like incredible. that. Like, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, definitely. But either way, I appreciate your time, Wells. Thank yeah, you man. very much. It was a blessing to meet you, brother. Let me know if I can help out in any other way. All right, man. You take care. You too, buddy. See ya. So there you go, guys. Um, Different perspective from Wells, professional, well, former professional player. Uh, Let me go back to my notes here. I wrote the the question. Uh, 2008, he was a Superliga champion. Uh, 2010, he won the MLS Cup champion. 2011, he was the Colorado Rapids Humanitarian Player of the Year. Now he's a co-founder of Soccer Resilience, teaching all about the mind. Again, it's the most powerful tool. Use it effectively that thing will skyrocket skyrocket you to success use it wrong and that thing's going to bring you down you see his perspective on how resilient and how tough he was mentally i hope you got some value out of that if you did share this interview with someone um else who did and that's all i got for you guys